Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art. And I like to water, you like to water color, cause you're here. I like to water. <laughs> Did I say I like to water? Yeah, no, we like to water. Thank I you. like to water and color, water, color. You like to water color, cause you're watching this. And uh, we are doing different projects every single week. We break it down into steps. So whether or not you are new or coming back to this or starting something else or just trying it for fun or living on the edge, uh, like we do you. like me. That's what I always say. Um, we are doing a squirrel this week. Ah. Al, some sort of noise sound what effect. What is her name? This is Jill. Hi, Jill. Jill the squirrel. That's actually her name, and uh, I based her off of an Instagram account called This Girl is a Squirrel. Jill the Squirrel. She is a Hurricane Isaac rescue squirrel. And her Instagram is... Are we supposed to rescue squirrels? I feel like if they're in need of rescuing. <laughs> right? I don't know. I <laughs> know that they can't get acorns somewhere else. Maybe she was at a shelter. An animal shelter. I, we should start uh, turning in <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, she's really cute. If you want to check out her Instagram, you can. But I asked... Um, Jill's owner, if it's okay if we did a project on her, she said that would be awesome. So here she is in all of her wonderful glory and we're doing a cute little flower crown on her because um, she actually wears flower crown sometimes and it's so cute. So we have four steps how, today. How did you find her? Did you just start following a squirrel account? How did I? Okay. No, I think it just popped up in one of my, in one of my like popular feeds on Instagram. And she was so cute and, I, and she was wearing a flower crown. And at that point, I just started painting animals with flower crowns for my Etsy shop. And so I was just like, I should paint her because she's already wearing a flower crown. And I did. And I posted it on Instagram and um, the owner shared it actually on her Instagram. And that's how I got like thousands of followers just from that one post. It was insane. Okay, so we have force a focus Al. We're talking, we're painting, we're painting a squirrel. We have four steps. So the first step is we're gonna put in the body with a wash. So we're calling it body wash, get it? <laughs> Two, we're doing the Sponsored fur. <laughs> Dove, can you help us out? Okay. Two, we're doing the fur texture, so like the belly furry part. Uh, three, we're gonna do the face, and there's a little, a few steps in there within that, so. Just follow along with me, you'll be totally fine. And the last step is details. And that's when we do the crown, that's when we do the whiskers, that's when we do the eyes, that's where we do the little textures. There's a lot of details. There are a lot of details with this one, but trust me, it's gonna be great. And uh, it's gonna look maybe a little bit funny until the very end. It's not gonna be as bad as the rabbit. The rabbit looked way bad until he put in the eyes and the whiskers, but this one, it doesn't look that bad while you're doing it because you're like, oh, that's a squirrel. Uh, I'm using a round six and a round two brush. I already traced the outline using graphite paper. You can find our outline on our website at letsmakeart.com. Um, you can just print it from there or if you have a sub or order our kit, it should be included so you'll be fine. Um, also, if you are a beginner, then I would suggest watching the live version of this because we go over warm-ups, we trace it together. So if you have any of those types of questions, we go over that before we start the live paint along. Okay? Okay. Okay, so the colors that we have today are black, olive green, cyclamen. Ooh, Ooh cyclamen is a flower, I learned. Is it cyclamen? Cyclamen. Cyclamen. And golden brown. So, um, and if you order our palettes, and I've gotten this question a lot, and I'm sorry I don't explain it every video, the middle is supposed to be bent on the palettes. It kind of goes up and goes off the sides. And that way you put your paint along the edge of the palette, and then you can use this whole middle for mixing. So when you go to put your paints, don't put them right in the middle because they're going to splay out on the sides. So put, uh, them, yeah, put them on the edges and then use the middle to mix. Okay, great, cool. Okay, so um, I'm gonna use my round six to put in this uh, body wash that we're doing. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of the black and the, oh, let me get golden brown on here. So I'm gonna mix the black and the golden brown here. 
And you're just gonna get like this dark brown kind of color. And we're just gonna start filling in this kind of big chunky area right here and um, the tail. So I'm gonna put it in, and then usually I like to just put in a lot of color first and then just using, just rinsing my brush, I just spread out the color that um, I initially put down just using water. It's just a really quick way. And don't feel like um, the wash has to be totally even. It's okay if there are parts where it's a little bit darker or a little bit lighter or you get some textures. The great thing about um, this squirrel painting is that this is such a big area that we could actually play with different textures and different things going on, but it, we're, our viewer will still understand that it's a squirrel. And go up to the head a little bit. You're supposed to have it traced so dark. Oh, sorry, yes. So I traced mine already, but I purposely did it dark so you guys can see what I'm doing as I'm painting. But when I do my own personal work and when you're doing this at home, try and get your tracing as light as possible. Um, and because watercolor is transparent, so you're gonna see all of these pencil lines through it. And um, sometimes like having those outlines can almost flatten your image a little bit. So if you can, just use really light pressure when you're tracing and that will make the line lighter and uh, it won't be as dark. But I did it a little bit darker so you guys can see clearly what I'm doing as I go. Now when I get to the head, I'm gonna kinda stop right there because we're gonna, that's gonna be step three is the face. So I'm just, I'm gonna kinda leave that alone. And I'm gonna move to the tail. And I want the darkest part of the tail, you see this chunk that we have outlined here? That part is supposed to be darker than the other parts. So I'm gonna start with putting color in there. And the reason why that's darker is because the tail is going behind the body. So the body is almost casting a shadow on the tail itself. I doubt that's real. It's a real thing. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then as I get to the top, you can, in the outline, I kind of have like the top outline, but don't feel like you have to follow that exactly. Um, the top of the tail, since it's furry, there's lots of different things coming out. Um, it's going to be a little bit more wild, so don't feel like you have to follow that exactly. Pretty much what you want to do when you get to the top is you want to make sure that your wash is lighter, so you see how this area is lighter than this. And I'm just going to take my brush and grab a little, like just black, so it's almost like this gray right here. They can see my palette right out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just using this like light gray wash and I'm just going to like swoop up. So you see how these brush strokes are thick on the bottom and then they thin out at the top. So while you're painting and you're doing this, you're gonna kind of like lift up your brush as you go. So you're gonna be pressing down and then you're going to lift up as and lighter pressure as you go out and that's how you get a thinner point at the end that's how you get a thick to thin stroke and you're just going to do that kind of like just at the top more random let them um, be let some of them be shorter let some of them be thicker remember random is the key to achieving good texture so we don't want it to all be like the same chunky pointy thing you know what i'm you get what I'm saying? Life. That's we don't want I chunky. Say, chunky pointy thing. <laughs> That's what we don't want. And then as it kind of goes to the left, then the uh, brush strokes are going to go more to the left. It's going to be like like it's kind of flipping out, you know. I like when you say chunky pointy. You're waiting for me to say something. <laughs> I'm like Al. He's going to make a joke. This. Make a joke. <laughs> so and essentially with that. Um, top of the tail, that's really all we need to do is just kind of put that in. We don't want to mess with it too much because we want it to be lighter. We want it to be a lighter wash. And to get a lighter wash, if you're not familiar with watercolor, is you just have more water than paint on your paintbrush. And I'm actually going to go back in right now and I am going to redo this kind of shadow that's right here. So I'm going to go in, put in this shadow, now, I know the hard thing with outlines is it's um, because I have things sectioned out where shadows are and maybe where highlights are, it's really easy that you're going to want to stay within this outline exactly, right? You're going to be like, I'm going to follow this outline just like that. 
don't do that, okay? What you wanna do is you're like, okay, that's where the shadow is, and then I'm just gonna blend this out. Blend it. It's just, those, those outline sections are more of a general idea for you, so you remember that a shadow goes there or a different, or a highlight goes there. We don't have to keep it so perfectly within those outlines because then our painting will feel sectioned off oh, and kind of, it, kind of chunky. <laughs> Listen, I care about you and I care about your painting, okay? Just trying to make sure it's good. Okay, um, and I'm gonna do one more shadowed area right underneath uh, this elbow here because the arm itself is coming out of the body and so that arm is casting a shadow. And that's how we kind of communicate that the arm is kind of off the body. Just like that. And you can go in and just do some like random little watercolor. You can drop in water if you want to drop in a little bit of color just to get some different texture going on. This is the time to play. I put a little bit more of a shadow on the back of this neck here. I feel like my tail, that's a good shadow. I might, after it dries, make one more run through over that and redefine that shadow a little bit more. But it's looking good. And th again, this is just kind of a mixture of the black and the golden brown. That's it for step one. We did the body wash, the wash of the body, the paint, the color. The wash of the body. <laughs> now we're going to move on to um, the white part, which uh, the squirrels have like this white furry patch on their belly. So I'm gonna actually move to my round two. And for this, I'm actually just going to take black and add some water to it so I get this gray. And I'm gonna kinda go through, now you can see here on the outline, I put a little sections of where you might wanna do a little bit of a fur texture or a fur area. Um, I'm just gonna kind of start off right where the hands uh, meet this, are going over the belly. And you have to imagine that the belly is like puffy and kind of furry and the hands themselves are resting on it. So the hands are casting a shadow on that fur. It's kind of going in a little bit because they're resting on it. So uh, right underneath the hands here, I'm gonna put in some gray. And then I just am going to take my paintbrush and blend it out a little bit. Now, when you're painting things like fur or for fur texture, you have to remember that we're not going through and painting each individual hair. Okay, when you do that, when you do kind of even textural brush strokes across any area, it's going to flatten it right away. So we basically are going to look for the areas uh, where there's shadow and you're going to kind of see it as in chunks and you're going to paint those shadow chunks and that is going to give our viewer enough information like, to show know. Show an example of a shadow chunk. Like so like right under here where there's a shadow underneath the hands, this is a little chunk that's shadowed right here. So that's why we're putting that shadow in there. But I'm not going in with a little bristle and doing like line, line, line. Even though in our head we know that these are made out of small hairs, that's not how we actually see them when we're, um, when we're looking at it. That's how our brain tells us we're seeing it, but that's not what we actually see. Okay? Is it confusing? Maybe a little. But you're fine. Just follow along with me. Just believe me is what I'm asking you. <laughs> Just when I say something, please believe it. Okay, and then I'm gonna kinda go through and put in just a shadow along the bottom part of the mouth. And um, I put in my gray, and that might be a little bit too dark, so you can always lighten something up by just rinsing your brush, lifting up color, lifting it up, and then patting it on your paper towel. So we're just kinda putting in just some shadow here. And then when we do our little fur textures kind of on these areas, you're gonna do like a, what sound did we make when we did the bird? I think it was like a doot doot doo. Yeah, the doot doot doos. Yeah. We're, gonna do a, we're gonna bring back the doot doot doos. So they're just a couple little, um, just little detail lines like this where it's like doot 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 doo. Looking out my back door. 
du, du. <laughs> is that a song? Du, du, du. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going through and you don't have to follow where I put them exactly if you feel like you want to put them in a different area do a little do 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 on your own you totally can these are more of a guideline for you guys so I'm just gonna do 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 it out now hopefully your outline especially on this side right here see how this is such a strong line on mine if you're doing it yours at home try and make sure that especially this area is really light um, because if you look in the original painting that line is barely there because if you see a squirrel it doesn't have like a dark outline on the end of it where the white fur is um, but it's it's still like the fur itself is there. So that's why you just need like a soft little detail being like, this is where the fur ends. Okay. It just fades. It just kind of fades. Usually the background around it will tell you where it ends, but we're not doing that. We're just doing a squirrel by itself. So you just, and then after you put in a couple do do do's, blend a couple areas out. Just use water, water, kind of hit it off the side of your brush so it's not dripping wet, and blend some of these out. And then I also like to do a little bit of gray, kind of where that fur meets the, the white fur meets the brown fur to get just a smoother transition. Just kind of blend that out. And then that goes with our, you know, not trying to have things be so sectiony or blocky. Blocky is probably a better word. Don't be so <laughs> and then after you blend out, you can go back and do another little do 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 over on top if you want it to be just a little bit darker at the top. I'm going to go along the end here just a little bit. But again, hopefully your outline is not as dark as mine, so this won't stand out as much. Oh, I forgot my little hand. Let's paint my hand. <laughs> okay. Paint your hand when you're doing the body wash, okay? This little hand on that side. Just like that. Okay. Sorry, I had to go do that. It was distracting me. So for our shadows, I put in some good fur. I'm gonna blend out this a little bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this gray and I'm going to establish just the mouth lines on um, the squirrel right now. So um, right underneath here, this little lip line, I'm gonna put a gray where it goes up to the nose. And then kind of on the other side a little bit. And we'll go back over with black when we um, do the face. But we just kind of want to establish those shadows already. Put those there. Another thing to remember when you're doing this for texture is when you do your do do do's, don't let them be all the same. You, you're not going to want to do, where's the scratch paper? Pause. Okay, when you do your do do do's, they're not like this. See how they're all even? Boring. They kind of just look like brush strokes. You want them to be like do 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 do. So you see how I have, they're not totally even, right? The line kind of goes up and down, and they're different lengths. So some are short, some are longer. Right, because hair itself is different lengths, so those shadows are casting different lengths that you're gonna see. So when you do your do do do's, I don't wanna see like do. What, what's a bad word for that? We don't want like blah, 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 okay? <clears throat> no blahs. Do a couple just do, 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 do. And if you gotta practice, that's totally fine. Practice on a little sheep, but do a couple of those. Blend them out a little bit. And I 
I think there's going to be a little bit more for Should texture. Everybody tag Jill the squirrel when they do this. Yes, She's that's a great. Get spammed with like <laughs> no, I think she would love it. I mean, wouldn't you love it if somebody painted your pet? I would love it. Somebody painted Harvey. I've yet to paint my own dog, but it's fine. So, uh, her Instagram name is This Girl Is a Squirrel. Or you can do like hashtag Jill the Squirrel. That's our hashtag for this project, actually. Okay. You guys, that was step two. We did Half, the white halfway. fur. Halfway done. You guys are doing great. Good job. Okay, now we're going to move on to step three, which is the face. So um, a couple things for this. Um, if you look at this original painting, what we want to be aware of is this nose right here, right? The nose part. So not, not exactly the nose, but this part right here. What would that be? The snout. The snout. The snout is a lighter wash and I, and I went with more of a golden brown color for that area. And then this area is darker and shadowed and so is the rest of the face. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm going to start off with the nose. I'm going to grab some golden brown. I'm going to mix a tiny, tiny bit of black in there so the golden brown isn't like, you know, like so bright that it looks like it doesn't belong on this picture. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what, did I read your mind? You're like, no, I was hoping, yeah, I was you're like, somebody was please gonna... tone that down. Calm down. Okay, so I'm going to follow along this edge here. Just like that. Put a little color here. And then I'm just going to rinse my brush, kind of pat it, and just blend out that color that I laid down. Letting it be the, the whitest near it where it hits this mouth. That's where it's going to be the lightest. Then I'm going to go over with the mixture that I use for the body and go over this edge again. It's going to bleed a little bit. That's okay. And you can use your two or your six for this part, whatever, whatever would make you feel more comfortable. We all have different preferences in terms of paintbrush size. Do we? We do. I mean, Al, how do you when you paint? Yeah, I'm yeah. only a fan. <laughs> I'm only a fan for on everything. Okay, and then I'm actually going to take that golden brown again, drop it in the middle because I lost it when I blended it out. Just kind of smooth that out. Just a touch of color, right? right in there, that's where whiskers are coming out of. So that's where it's just a little bit stronger in color. And then I'm gonna take that brown mixture that I use for the body and just kind of fill in the rest of the face. But I am avoiding these curves around the eye as well as the eye itself. And that is because we're gonna do that with like um, a pinkier, like a peach kind of color because uh, it's the eye socket of the squirrel. If you look at it, there's actually no fur there. It's just kind of like a skin. Feels very anatomically correct. Oh, it is. Trust me when I say it is. <laughs> just believe me. <laughs> and then I'm going to go and do kind of another round of a little bit darker color, kind of on this back part around the eye. And remember to blend it out. Just rinse your brush, dab it on your paper towel, and just kind of blend that out. Okay, and now we're going to do the ears. So basically, I'm just going to take this same dark brown mixture, go at the top here. I kind of have a little chunk outlined. So you're going to go around the back, darken the edge, and do the other side. Now, we are going to put a floral crown on ours. You don't have to. Maybe you don't, you're not into flowers. That's okay. Put a top hat. Yeah. Or do nothing, just let it be a plain squirrel, that's fine. So I'm actually not gonna do a ton of detail in this middle area, because it's just gonna be covered with flowers anyway. And um, if I were to get really detailed and paint really dark, since watercolor's transparent, um, it would get kind of really muddy there. So I'm almost just gonna leave this section a little bit bare, but I'm still gonna do the top of the ears. And then after I put in that dark, I'm just going to rinse my brush, blend this out again a little bit on my ears. And 
and do, and this is where we're gonna introduce our cyclamen. So our cyclamen is going to, we're gonna mix, because it's kind of like a purpley color. When you add water, it turns to pink. And you're gonna mix that a little bit with the golden and you get this kind of peach color. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a little dab of that kind of in the ears. Just like that. And that just, I mean, that's such a subtle difference, but it's just those subtle changes of like, oh no, now you actually see the skin of the air, ear where there's oh, no, no fur. Skin of the ear. We want that because everybody, all the animals have it, right? Even dogs, like their ears kind of get pink a little bit on the inside. It's a good thing, Al, don't, don't worry. worry. Don't worry. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, do the like pink side of the socket around the eye. So I'm gonna take that same like peach color that I mix, which is just a little bit of cyclamen and a little bit of the golden brown. And I'm just gonna go around the bottom part of the eye socket. And right this top part here too. Now I did leave this chunk. I'm gonna go back and fill that in, but I like to leave, when I'm doing like detail work, I like to leave a little bit of white space around it so that way it's not wet when I'm trying to work with it and it won't bleed. And I might add just a little bit more yellow to it so it's not super pink. We still want it to feel like it belongs to the squirrel. Okay. It's okay. It's good. And then we're gonna do the little nose part two. We're on step three. Did I say that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably I did. Yeah, we're on step three. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure it's a, I'm gonna add a little bit more pink to it to get a nice, because we want the nose to be a little bit stronger in color, especially right here at the base. So right here where that mouth meets the nose, it's gonna be the pinkest. Actually, I'm gonna switch to a two. And then the rest of it is gonna be more of this like peach color. But we do, we definitely want it to read more pink than the rest of the body. Oh, look at that cute little nose. Is that cute? <laughs> I love it. I love doing little noses. It makes me really happy. Okay, so we did our cute little nose. Um, now I'm gonna kind of fill in this area. Just use that brown that we use for the body. Fill that in. Now we're not gonna do whiskers and stuff just yet. That's gonna be on the very end because we wanna it's make sure. Details. <laughs> that step is details and you're getting ahead of yourself. No, I'm just kidding. It's okay to be excited. I'm gonna go over one more time. No whiskers, no eyeballs. That's don't do eyeballs, don't do whiskers. Okay, I'm gonna go over the edge of the mouth where that kind of snout is kind of protruding a little bit more from the face. I'm gonna darken that line just a little bit more. Blend it out a little. And we do that because then it's super clear, especially since this is lighter, that it's um, on a different plane than the face, right? It's not like a smooth thing. It's like smooth and then the, the snout kind of like pops out, you know, you know. Yeah, just like that. Okay. And now I'm gonna go through with just black in my round two and I'm gonna start putting in the lines for the mouth. So kind of where the center part is, where the like lips meet to the nose, we're gonna do that black. Just a thin line, so make sure you're light pressure with your brush. And then kind of where there's gonna be like this little circle area right here that we're going to have a little bit more like that. So it's like, oh, that's where it's a little hole. You know, <laughs> and then you're gonna do a little bit of a black line for the nostril. Just like that. She's so cute. I like her already. Okay, that is our, let's do some texture lines on our faces. So same thing. Is this detail stuff? <sighs> yes, yes, let's move on to the details. Let's do it. You guys, 
We're like, I mean, if you're looking at your squirrel right now, um, you, sh you should be feeling pretty good. You should be like, yeah, this looks like a squirrel. I'm doing great. So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna do the last step, which is details. Now this painting does have a lot of details. So just kind of be what patient. Kind of details are we at? So we still have to put in the floral crown. We still have to do the eyeballs. We got whiskers. We got some fur textures, and I'll probably go in and establish my shadows a little bit better on the tail and the arm. Okay, that's what, that's what we're looking at here. So let's start with, what do you want to start with? Let's start with um, the, eyeballs. the eyeballs. Good call. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's my, my so that's idea. That's my idea, actually. Okay. Now, when you do these eyeballs, you see that I have t two tiny little white circles. Don't paint those, okay? Those are the glare of the eyeballs. I'm just using pure black to fill this in. And the reason why eyeballs have glares is because eyeballs are wet. Don't touch them. <laughs> just believe me when I this say this. <laughs> this is, as someone who has two children, I know you're going to want to touch them. They look wet. Don't touch them. Don't do it. It's going to kind of curve out. I'm just going to fill it in. I lost a little bit of my glare on one of them, but that's okay. If you can try and keep your other circle more of a perfect circle, that would be great. I lost mine a little bit, but uh, I can still tell that it's a glare, so I'm not worried about it. If you have, if that really bothers you. It doesn't. Wait for it to dry. If you have bleed proof white, just do a dot of bleed proof white. It's not gonna bother me though. And then for the other eye, I'm actually just filling this whole guy in. Because we're only seeing the side, he doesn't, he's not really gonna, she's not gonna have a glare. Okay, Al? Okay. Okay. Oh, look at her eyes. Okay, great, good job. That's it, that's the eyes. Genius. Now we're going to do um, some fur textures. So you can see here, like on the arm here, I have on the outline, I had a little um, dashes. So we're gonna kind of put those in. It's the same little do do do's that we did on the fur. You just wanna make sure that when you do these fur lines that you're using a color that's darker than what's there. Um, because if it's too light, it's not gonna show up in those details. So it's the golden brown and you black, won't even see. Maybe a little more. Uh, the golden brown and black, that should just be good enough. And even sometimes, um, here, I'll, I'm, let me show you, Al. Golden brown and black, um, you can test it. Like, oh, okay, that's darker, I'm good. You're gonna do some do-do-do's here. And then you're gonna like blend them out just a little bit. And sometimes I like to introduce a stronger color um, just for like, I don't know, like as a high, not necessarily as like a light highlight, but just for color variation. So um, I'm just kind of introducing a little bit of golden brown in here. And there's no really rhyme or reason to it. It's just dropping in a different color. Same thing on the hand. I'm gonna introduce a little bit like, oh, there's some golden brown right on that hand. And kind of throughout the body, I'm just kind of putting in some golden. Because I just think that adding a rich color in some places really kind of like, um, it makes it unique, it kind of brings it out, makes it interesting. If you hate it, don't do it. But hopefully you don't. And maybe a little bit like here. Mm -hmm. This cheek. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move to my six because I'm going to do a couple... Um, for textures down here, but I'm just gonna use a bigger brush. These are totally random. It's really just trying to get a value difference in there. You're like a magician. We've never met before, correct? Completely <laughs> random. <laughs> you don't know who I am, right? That was funny, Al. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in and establish, I lost my arm shadow a little bit. If you're looking here, um, there's not a strong dark area right underneath this elbow like I want. So. That's not a problem. Just when that wash is dry, go in and put it back in. Blend it out just a little. And a trick for not blending it out totally is when I blend out, I'm only gonna go on the edge. 
So I'm only touching the edge of this area and blending it out. I'm not going all the way to where the other side of the dark mark is. You see what I'm saying? So it kind of keeps that area a little bit darker and doesn't blend it all the way out. And remember when you blend, you want it to go from dark to light. Um, you don't want it to be like dark, light, dark. So just kind of smooth it out. You can always use your paintbrush as a way to push color to one side. So if this area is wet, I can just use a damp brush and push color. See how that's moving all to that one side? Mm. Mm, sure. Okay, I put in my shadow. I'm gonna put in a shadow a little bit more on my tail. Just right here. I'm gonna mix a little bit more black in there so it's nice and dark. But I don't want it pure black because that's gonna kinda just kinda gray out that area. We don't want it to be gray. And then just kinda blend out and I'm only blending on the edges here. And you can like add a couple like wispies up here Okay, we're looking good, guys. You're doing great. You're doing so good. Um, one other thing that I'm gonna add is, I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow on my arm. So this arm has a form, and the under part of the arm is turning away from us, right? Because it's rounding in, so it's going away from the light. So we just wanna add a little bit of, of shadow on here, just on the bottom part. Give that arm a little bit more form. Just like that. Great, excellent, beautiful. Okay, let's do our crown. You ready for it? Crown or whiskers, we gotta do them both. Crown and whiskers, it's gotta happen. Before I do either though, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna take my round two. I'm gonna add, I've noticed that this side of the lip I've totally left white. So I'm just gonna take the black that's there, just blend it out just a little, just to give it a little bit of shadow on that side. That's it. Sorry guys, sorry, sorry. Before we do, <laughs> but before we go there, okay. So for my floral crown, I'm just using cyclamen and olive green for my colors for my crown. If you have other pink colors, feel free to play. Um, but I'm just gonna grab some pure cyclamen on here. I'm using my round two, and I'm just gonna add flowers. Now I like to do what I call scribble flowers. They're pretty great. So for my scribble flowers, I basically just take my pink and I do a little like scribble in a circle and I leave the center white and then I just rinse my brush and I'm only touching the edges here of this flower with water and letting those spread out. Now this is not a super detailed flower, but they don't need to be. And usually when you just put like circular blobs on top of something with leaves, they're like, oh, those are flowers. Okay, so these are loose, these are fun. These don't, aren't like tiny little perfect flowers that we're going for. It's really just, it's really just about having fun. Al, are you having fun? Having a blast. <laughs> and I'm gonna do another little scribble flower over here. So a little scribble, you're gonna leave the, the center white. You're not gonna touch the center with water. You're only gonna go along the edges with this wet brush and kind of let those barely touch and bleed out. You can make it as big or as small as you want. And I like to do a couple little uh, buds. Hey bud. Hey, hey little, hey little bud. And um, this is your painting, so put your flowers and buds wherever your heart desires. Yours go right in the ears. Mine's going on top of the ears, Al, on top. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my olive and start putting in leaves. So I like to do bigger leaves, and then I'm also gonna do a couple little stems. Now when I do my leaves, I generally just like kinda draw them and then just fill them in. So I'm just gonna do my little curved. I like my leaves to be curved, narrow at the top, narrow at the bottom. Do my little stem, and then do leaves on either side. The thing is you just wanna make sure it looks full, so just try and fill in any white spaces that are in between these areas. I'm 
And we also kind of want to cover these white parts that we left from the ears. I'm doing little stems where my buds are. Do another little leaf down here. I'm going this way. This is totally, I'm, you know, I'm making it up as I go right here. No plan, everybody. No this plan. Is, this is all, moment. I like to live on the edge, as I say. And this is what's happening. Living on the edge. Okay. For your hardcore watercolor. <laughs> okay. There's my crown. Isn't it cute? You can that's add, it? that's it. That's all you got to do that's for so a crown. Easy. It's so simple. Maybe if you want to do a couple little dots in between there, you can. I knew there was more. There's always more. Okay, fabulous. That's it, you guys, that's so good. Okay, now we're going to do, let's do a little bit of fur texture on our forehead. I'm just gonna take some dark brown. I have some already outlined for you, but they're just little dut dut does, kinda here, just kinda around the squirrel head. Remember, we don't want to do the entire thing in little dashes because if we, we have a great value change right here, see how it's dark and it lightens up as we go across. If I were to do even brush strokes across that entire surface, it would totally flatten that. You wouldn't be able to see that value change anymore. It would be a bummer. So don't do that, okay? Okay. You'd never forgive yourself. <laughs> you would just be so mad. Okay, now we're gonna do our whiskers and I think the whiskers actually add a lot to our, um, to our painting. So I'm just gonna take my round two, just grab some black, and I'm just gonna make sure I have a nice, good consistency where it's, it's wet enough that I can do a nice, long, thin line and the paint won't run out, so you gotta add a little bit of water in there to make sure it moves easy. If you wanna take a scratch paper to, to uh, play with it, you can. But with whiskers, you want them to be thin. You want them to be like super, super thin. Um, if they become too thick, then they become distracting, right? We don't want whiskers to be that thick. So the trick to thin whiskers is just super light pressure, like you're barely touching your paintbrush to the paper. And you're just gonna kind of um, like wisp it, wisp it. So you see how thin those are? So you see how that reads more whisker than that? And that's, wisp it. <laughs> wisp that good. And then the whiskers themselves, um, some of them kind of go straight out, some of them kind of curve down. So I'm kind of overlapping them and they kind of like splay out a little bit. Okay? Okay. Okay. So practice that a couple times if you need to, um, just so you feel comfortable. Remember, really light pressure. And you don't have to be slow. You don't have to be like, this, this, because then your hand gets shaky and you're not going to get an even line. I always noticed that. Yeah. That happens to me. I do get shaky lines when I go slow. So you almost just have to be like, I'm gonna be really confident and I'm just gonna be like, you're a thin line, you're a thin line. You know, you got it? Okay, great, let's do it. So um, I'm, it's easier for me to go out. So I like to start from where the whiskers are originating and move out that way. And that way they kind of thin out at the end. And um, they're kind of like coming out right here, like on this side of the lip. And I'm just gonna kind of like thin out. Whoa, those got really long, that's okay. And then there's some kind of right here at the brow. There's some whiskers kind of coming out here. Those are just old man eyebrows. Yep. It happens to all of us, even squirrels. And then there's gonna be some on the other side here. So I'm actually gonna turn my painting upside down because it's easier for me to work my way out than to um, try and do it backwards. But do it whatever way you feel comfortable. And um, I'm just going to kind of right here where this dark center is, kind of start whisk whiskering it out. Whisk it out like that. And then I'm gonna do, I don't think I have this in the, I think I forgot it in the original, but I'm gonna add a couple here. Just, my flowers are wet. 
Just a couple. And then you kind of like look and see, I feel like I need a darker one in here. There we go. There we go. Okay. You guys, that's it. That's our squirrel. You did it. I really want to see it. So please post it. We have a Facebook group where you can share your work. It's called Let's Make Art Together. You can post it. People tell you how awesome you are. It's really wonderful. Um, so share it there. Uh, if you post it on Instagram, our Instagram name is, you can tag us, Let's Go Make Art. Uh, I would love to see it. And our um, hashtag for this is Jill the Squirrel. So, and you can tag her in it or just hashtag. I'm sure she'll see it. She was really excited to have Jill be part of a project. So I hope she even paints Jill. I would love to see hers. So um, I think that's all. <laughs> so um, again, thank you so much. We are going to paint this live on Tuesday, 7.15 Central Standard Time. So next Tuesday, if you are just watching that, what's the date? On that actually. So August 28th, 715 Central Standard Time, we are painting this live. So if you have questions, if you have concerns, or if you just want to come hang out, please paint with us. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please post your artwork and share it and be brave. You can do it. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.